Hey there, welcome to another episode of the Netflix. Today we've got Sander Gertz and he's going to tell us all about blockchain. Azure blockchain. Indeed. Azure blockchain. Yes, wow. indeed. The only right way to do blockchain. Uh, <laughs> yeah, some would say so, indeed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, blockchain options on uh, on Azure. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, and just to re uh, recapitulate um, um, what blockchain is about, um, uh, for those who don't know, I, I just want to say blockchain is about trust, proof, and determinism. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> blockchain uh, allows you to have uh, trust in, in the data. Mm -hmm. It allows you to prove that the data is correct. And determinism means that um, uh, what happens is um, the only way it could have happened. So uh, there is no doubt uh, about the data that is in the blockchain. Okay, so this is useful in scenarios where uh, partners do not necessarily trust each other. Exactly, exactly. That's the, that's the main reason to use blockchain. Okay. Um, blockchain is essentially a database, but it's a special kind of database that uh, has these properties of trust, proof and determinism. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people confuse blockchain with Bitcoin, mm -hmm. and while Bitcoin is an example of a blockchain, the blockchain is not just a Bitcoin. Right. Um, uh, blockchain is is not just about Bitcoin. It's about anything um, uh, that has these properties of trust, proof, yeah, and determinism. Yeah. So also anything that doesn't have to do with currencies whatsoever, you could you could use the blockchain exactly. to prove that some data existed in the, in the chain, and nobody can dispute that. Exactly. Yes, and the and the transaction that is recorded in the blockchain cannot be changed. Mm -hmm. Nobody can change. Uh, what is uh, written in the blockchain once okay. it's there? Once it's there, um, and um, but obviously, like uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and like a thousand other cryptocurrencies <laughs> are usually associated with the, the blockchain. Yeah, That's yeah. what it is. What is basically the underlying technology that make this. Exactly. Uh, possible. Yes, yeah. exactly. And so you have several scenarios where a blockchain can be um, uh, interesting. Uh, in term, when, when you have auctions, for example, where you have multiple parties that want to um, uh, make an offer. Okay. And, um, and you need to verify that that offer is, is valid, is genuine. Um, uh, supply chain management is also a very common scenario where a blockchain is used. Healthcare is, is important because in healthcare scenarios, you have, um, for example, medicine that needs to be uh, validated, tracked, and traced. Um, but also, you need to uh, have a secure data access, and yeah. you have to be sure that whoever accesses the data in a healthcare-related oh, blockchain yeah. is is accessed by the right people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in general, you can say. Blockchain is a is a good way to get rid of paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, and it's uh, also getting rid of some kind of a third party that we all need to trust because we can using this technology we can uh, prove that everything is correct in this blockchain. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, for example, if you want to enter into a, an agreement with someone, mm -hmm. and you have um, uh, you, know, you don't necessarily trust that person, mm -hmm. uh, what do you do? You write down. Uh, the, an agreement. Yeah. Yeah. You, t you, you, you write up a contract uh, that specifies the obligations, the rights and, and, and uh, the requirements that mm -hmm. b the parties involved need to uh, adhere to. And, um, and the important thing is um, uh, if, if somebody breaks that agreement, um, what do you do? You have to go to court. Yep. You got a lawyer. You got a lawyer. So you lawyer up. <laughs> so more and more paper. So yeah, blockchain yeah. is a, is a way to get rid of a lot of that paper because you can um, you can write down, you can codify all the elements of the agreement and, and put them in in code, mm -hmm. and that's what they call a smart contract. Yeah. Um, um, so. Um, so that's basically the, the blockchain technology. Now this is in, I think, five minutes. I think we spent discussing what blockchain is, more or less. Mm -hmm. You can spend hours, days, yeah. discussing yeah. blockchain. And we're not going to do that today. Today uh, We are going to uh, discuss what blockchain can do 
for you uh, when you work with Azure. Okay. And so blockchain on Azure, there are two options. Um, they're not mutually exclusive, they work together, but there's on one side you have the blockchain, Azure blockchain work, uh, service, mm -hmm. which is a fully managed ledger service, and on the other side you have the Azure blockchain workbench. And the Azure blockchain workbench allows you to create and deploy blockchain applications. Um, so um, we are going to discuss uh, the, the, the Azure blockchain service uh, first, yep. and then in a second iteration, uh, we are going to uh, uh, discuss the Azure blockchain okay. workbench options. Yeah, so we'll make a separate episode of that that will follow this one. Exactly, cool. exactly. Yes. Um, let me start by just, you know, um, showing you uh, what the uh, what the uh, components are of an Azure of, a, of an enterprise blockchain application, mm -hmm. which is okay. You have three components. You have you have to launch um, and manage um, an application mm -hmm. that you can do on the Azure blockchain uh, on the Azure blockchain service. Okay. You need to model smart contracts. Um, you can do that using Visual Studio Code, and there is a Visual Studio Code extension. Okay. Uh, for blockchain um, that is very helpful in modeling and, ma and, and creating uh, and, and testing um, your smart contract. And um, if you want to finally build and extend the application, you have, you have an interface because uh, a smart contract in itself has a very rough interface, doesn't, yeah. um, uh, but you would preferably have an API that you can yeah. talk to. Uh, that's where the Azure uh, Blockchain Workbench okay. and Development Kit comes into play. Um, but first, the Azure Blockchain Service, uh, which is uh, pretty easy to find if you uh, if you just go to uh, Azure um, and uh, you go to the uh, Azure portal um, under uh, uh, Blockchain, you have uh, the various blockchain options uh, that. Um, these are just a couple, and, and you can see that there are a lot of uh, different um, uh, ledgers and tools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the, 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 the Azure Blockchain service is, um, is uh, like it says, it's a fully managed ledger service. And the reason why they created this was because initially they had a they had the blockchain workbench before. Mm -hmm. um, and that's more like an SDK that you need as a developer to build something on it? Uh, yes, so the, the, the workbench SDK um, uh, it has, has the, all the tools, but you can, uh, you can uh, start up um, uh, a workbench uh, environment as well in, mm -hmm. in Azure uh, as well. Uh, the problem here is that um, that environment is not fully managed oh, okay. and they came they had some problems with it um, w one of them problems was that the, the disk was running f was was, yeah. was filled filling up, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. was filling up and how you manage uh, that environment so they created this Azure blockchain service to uh, to allow you to to grow and and, and connect other uh, uh, partners in your consortium and connect them to the, the Blockchain. Yeah. Um, so it's basically a serverless blockchain solution. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Serverless, but still there is a service. Yeah. A server. Um, and then this service has been in preview for for a little while now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Any uh, GA dates announced? Uh, uh, not that I'm aware of. No. Although Ignite is just around the corner. Yeah. Yep. And so I think uh, two weeks. In two weeks and. Um, so I sincerely hope that they have some announcements to make yeah. that is becoming uh, general available. But I have no insight into that. Okay. Okay. So. okay, so what do you do when you create a blockchain uh, service? Um, it's, it's very simple. You just uh, check your subscription that, that you use. You enter a, user, um, a resource group. The region that you want to uh, install it, as you can see, there are not. There are a number of regions that mm -hmm. have this option, but not all regions. Yeah. Um, Pretty typical for a premium <coughs> service. So. 
Exactly. That will be expanded later on. Exactly, yes. Um, and then uh, the protocol. Now the protocol is, um, is Quorum, which is um, uh, effectively a, a fork of the Ethereum blockchain. Okay. And why did they use Quorum? Because Quorum is uh, specifically geared to enterprise scenarios. Okay. Where you have um, uh, things like permissions. And you don't want you don't want anyone to just arbitrarily join your consortium. Right. Uh, you need some some onboarding, way of yeah. uh, some sort of onboarding. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Quorum is is, uh, is 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 doing that for you. Um, now you can create your own consortium. Or you can add, uh, or, or you can uh, uh, join uh, an existing uh, okay. consortium if you if you have one already. Um, I just entered the name, uh, some a password, and then uh, the pricing. Obviously, pricing is mm -hmm. uh, uh, is is uh, interesting, um, and there is basically two uh, pricing tiers right now. You have a one core or a two core. Um, and um, if you if you just use it for testing and development, you a one a one uh, core is uh, is sufficient. But if you uh, uh, want to run production loads, yep. then you need uh, a bit more. And this is all this has all to do with performance, right? So if you if I would take a basic one, does it also potentially mean that when I start um, calculating stuff in this blockchain, it would take longer, or is this no. not? Cor no. uh, correlating to this uh, to this pricing tier. Uh, no, it would not necessarily take longer. Perhaps if you have like thousands of transactions mm -hmm. per per hour, uh, it may uh, may be a, a factor. But um, the the more important uh, um, uh, consideration is the number of validator nodes ah, yeah. and transaction nodes that mm -hmm. you have. Yeah. So uh, an, um, if you have just one uh, transaction node and your service uh, goes down, then your blockchain goes yeah, down. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. So you don't need, so you don't, you don't necessarily want that, but for development and test. Yeah. So it's more about availability of your blockchain. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So now, yeah. are, is this blockchain you're creating, is this based still on proof of work? Or is it more like a proof of stake scenario? Uh, no, it's basically it's a proof of authority. Right. So um, if you um, uh, proof of work is uh, is a is a uh, is challenging because uh, that yeah. uh, uh, that's one of the downsides you usually see when when discussing blockchain is yeah. you need massive numbers of machines and, and Bitcoin is you know costing yeah, uh, like the not, not really sustainable. <laughs> no, it's not sustainable. Is is it's, it's generating uh, uh, or it's it's costing the, the amount of power that a small country would use yeah. just to to run and yeah. obviously that's that's not sustainable in uh, in, a, in the long term. Uh, so uh, and it's not necessary if you if you're running uh, a consortium based um, blockchain. Um, so when you when you're done entering all these data, then uh, you you just review and create, mm -hmm. um, and the creation takes about um, uh, ten to fifteen minutes. So I'm not doing that right now. Um, I have already uh, started my own uh, blockchain service. Okay. Um, uh, just a test environment because uh, I'm not that wealthy. And I saw that the pricing was in dollars, so I cannot pay with Bitcoin? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you could. I, know. Uh, I don't know. No, I don't think so. You, uh, yeah. No. Uh, and so what you see here is uh, it's just uh, the, the number of transaction nodes that you are, have. You can add more transaction nodes, which is, you know, obviously a, a good thing if you uh, if you're running in, in a production environment and yeah. you need um, uh, availability uh, is important. Um, and um, uh, law, there's logging. Um, there's metrics, so you can see how many transactions are uh, running on your uh, uh, on your uh, uh, environment. Mm -hmm. um, if you have, for example, here's the number of pending transactions. If you have a lot of pending transactions, then obviously you, need, you may need to scale up yep. as well. 
Does this service also provide auto skill capabilities? Uh, no, 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 that is no, not at this moment. No. Um, uh, at some point, they obviously they will do that. Okay. But uh, you might be able to create an alert rule and then yeah, exactly. you could trigger yeah. something, trigger and a script then, uh, that will do it yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's not baked in as of yet. No, 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 no. So, so you can add alerts, etc. The one, the one thing that you cannot do at this moment is um, uh, okay, change, change the price yeah. 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 at this moment. So, th but that's kind of going to change as well. Um, so yeah, that's that's all all there is to it. If you want to run your own blockchain, you just um, create your blockchain uh, service here. And you can start onboarding other uh, people, uh, other parties into your consortium as well. Um, so that's the uh, the blockchain service. Um, uh, I would like to show you more about the Azure Blockchain Workbench mm -hmm. and the SDK and the uh, Visual Studio Code extension. But I think that's yeah. probably better for another session. Okay, yeah, we'll pick we'll it do. up in the next episode. Okay, cool. cool. So we're learning all about the Azure Blockchain service here. Um, check out the next episode in which Sander is going to show us the, the workbench because you need that to create an actual application to use this, uh, this blockchain. Yeah. So uh, check out that next episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.